I know I'm calling this video my 25th video special, but in all honesty, I just wanted to do something special for you guys, my audience, for my birthday. I went around the sun 35 times this past week. 35 is a lot. It's always awkward for me when I get too much spotlight, so let's celebrate a bunch of different accomplishments all at once. This video is a 1.5k subscriber special, the 25th episode special, and a 35 times around the sun, just call me John special. And I couldn't have done this without the continued support from each and every one of you, so I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the support. I asked the YouTube community the top five questions that they wanted me to address in this video, and that's what I'm going to be addressing. To keep this video on the shorter side, I'm just going to skim through most of the questions without going into too much of a deep dive. So don't expect to become an expert just by watching this video. Additionally, some of the comments that didn't get the most votes to be part of this video, I also address in the comment section. If you spent time out of your busy day to ask me a question, the least I could do is respond. And I'll have a link to the post below for anyone that's interested in the rest of the questions that didn't make this video. And the last thing that I do wanna say for my 25th special that has surprised me consistently is just how diverse this community is. And I appreciate getting insight from every single type of INTJ, regardless of gender, creed, or location that you're from. It's just a very interesting data point for me. And honestly, it makes me very proud to have harbored such an inclusive environment because that is the purpose of my channel. All right, let's begin with the questions. Can you get more deep with our cognitive functions, especially with Papa and I and Mama TE and Baby SE? I'm not gonna go too in depth in this video because I'm writing a series. And honestly, it might be the next four videos that I put out unless I feel very strongly about another topic that trumps it. I do see a common misconception when it comes down to cognitive functions that is prevalent all over the internet that I do want to address in this video. We're human beings. We cannot isolate cognitive functions. They all interact together as a whole, as a unit. Also, people tend to oversimplify cognitive functions such as mama extroverted thinking. People think mama extroverted thinking only cares about getting shit done. When in actuality, she's a little more complex than that. There's a human aspect to it. TE is how INTJs and most TE users express how we care about someone. Here's a quick skit. I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, quick question. I just saw this video on salsa dancing and I thought it was really, really interesting. What do you think? Should we do more research? What part of salsa dancing are you researching? I actually, hold on, that doesn't matter. We're never gonna use salsa dancing in our life. Yeah, and I, we don't care for dancing. Did someone say salsa dancing? Guys, we have to learn salsa dancing. There's that new place that just opened up and we wanted to go for so long. SE, you know we're never gonna go there. And we never go there because we don't know how to dance. But if we know how to dance and I... Come on, man, I know you've always been curious about checking out that place. And FI, there's a lot of hot single ladies there. Come on, bro. I've always wondered why there's always a line there. You think the drink's better? You think the decor's good? Do people just dance? We kinda are lonely. Exactly. Also, T.E., Grace's wedding's coming up soon, and she is of a Hispanic heritage. She might do salsa dancing, we don't know. Do you think she'll enjoy it if we just sit in the back and not do any dances? She's not gonna enjoy that, dude. Come on, you care about her. You care about Grace. Actually, you kinda got a point. She might enjoy it if we dance with her on her wedding day. Exactly, I think it's determined, guys. We're gonna learn salsa dancing so we can dance with Grace at her wedding. We're gonna learn salsa dancing, we're gonna shout that club for you and I, and in FI, we're gonna meet you a hot lady that you're gonna love. You already know I'm not gonna hit on anyone, even if we go. It's okay, baby. Let's have a little bit of drink and let me work my magic. S-E. Can you provide examples of INTJs in real life, movies, TV shows, etc., and their most identifiable INTJ traits? And support I answered, this could be a series in itself. And honestly, that's something that I was considering doing. I'm going to ruffle some feathers talking about this person because I know some of you are gonna be like, why are we talking about him? Or, he's mistyped, he's not really an INTJ. And my answer to both those responses is that, we have to accept our INTJs regardless of their good and their bad. And this person, regardless of how you feel about them, is an INTJ. Also, the people that watch my channel, my audience, you guys are from all around the world, so I can't just choose a Hollywood movie star that's famous in the US because that person might not be famous in a different country. Everyone in the world should know who this person is because he used to be the richest man in the whole world. Mr. Elon Musk. I'm not gonna talk about the ethics surrounding him. I'm also not gonna talk about his IQ or how he obtained his wealth. This is purely an objective analysis on how to spot an INTJ in the wild. Similar to how introverted thinking works, NI not only looks for what is, we look for what is not to find the patterns. And the patterns that I'm going to describe when it comes down to Elon Musk has to do with his cognitive functions. And looking at a few of the companies that he owns, it shows that he has low introverted sensing and a high extroverted thinking. The companies that he owns shows that he has low SI because those companies are focused more on innovation, more on technology or advancement of humanity of things that we don't really know much about already. And the reason why he has high TE is because those companies are typically trying to fix a problem that no one really asked them to fix. The company SpaceX is focused on trying to get people out of Earth. 
in case anything happens. The focus of his company Tesla is to make sure that people can still get around but in a more eco-friendly way. And his company Neuralink is to get rid of aging ailments such as dementia and stuff. Just by looking at those three companies, they all have to do with innovation and have to do with uncharted territory or paths that we don't have a lot of science or a lot of data to support. So then we can automatically eliminate SI from his cognitive function stacks. And because we're eliminating SI in the four stack, that means we automatically have to eliminate extroverted intuition. If you're not too familiar with cognitive functions, just understand that if you have introverted intuition, NI, you automatically have extroverted sensing, SE. And if you have introverted sensing, that means you automatically have extroverted intuition. You can't have NI and SI in the top four stacks of your cognitive functions. That's not how it works. Also, by looking at the patterns in this company, you could tell that he's a high TE user. So TE is most likely in his first or second stack. Now, looking back at a few of his interviews, he's mentioned multiple times that as a child, he has had explosions of thoughts. An explosion of thoughts in your adolescent years typically means that you are a high NI or NE user. And it's not TI because in his interviews, he specifically say that they're concept, they're more ideas, they're more abstract and not in the details itself. Since we already established that Elon doesn't have SI in his four cognitive function stack, that automatically means that he doesn't have NE, which automatically means that he has NI. So this first two cognitive function is either NITE or TENI. And the only two personality type in the 16 Myers-Briggs personality type that has that is either an INTJ or an ENTJ. And the clearest thing for me to notice when it comes down to Elon Musk is his use of FI. A little history about this guy is that back in 2008, SpaceX and Tesla were on the verge of bankruptcy because the economy was collapsing and those companies weren't generating any cash flow. And instead of giving up on his company or changing the way that it operates, this guy doubled down because Auntie FI told him, hey Elon, stick to it because you're gonna change the world because for a high NI user, if we can think it, it's pretty much reality at that point. Lastly, the last few times that you see him on the media is because of how he's been handling Twitter. And how he's been handling Twitter is exactly how an INTJ acts when we're in our SE grip. When an INTJ feels like we're backed up in a corner, whenever SE takes control, we don't really care about the future. We care about the here and now. We're going to do what we think feels good at that moment. That's what he's doing right now. SE not only cares about engaging with the world, it actually cares about status and people. So whenever a person is in our SE grip, we do try to vibe off of what other people are telling us. So him posting on Twitter, saying all these random BS out there, he's trying to find validation and he's also trying to tell people at the exact same time that he's, that he's working on improving Twitter itself. I agree that it's coming off very tone deaf, but he's just in an SE grip. To conclude this section, the best way to type anyone is process of elimination. You have to look at a very holistic view of the person. I see a lot of people get confused with this one. Can you give examples of how to differentiate ISTJ and INTJs? I'm not surprised that people can't tell the difference between ISTJs and INTJs. I'm also not surprised if an ISTJ or INTJ believe that they're the other type. We're so similar. And as with any type, it comes down to our cognitive functions. The ISTJ and INTJ both have mama extroverted thinking in our second slot and introverted feeling in our third slot, which means that the way we approach the world externally looks very similar. The first cognitive function for an INTJ is introverted intuition, and for an ISTJ, it's introverted sensing, both perceiving types. It means that our first cognitive functions create all these blueprints that we work off of, but what most people are gonna see is our first extroverted cognitive function, which is extroverted thinking. When you see an ISTJ or INTJ at work, we're going to get shit done without complaining much. We're not gonna talk about our feelings much, and we enjoy being that more silent person in the back. ISTJs lead with introverted sensing. And a negative harmful stereotype is that ISTJs like tradition. For an ISTJ, they create blueprints based off of SI about what have worked before, but they also have TE, which cares about efficiency, time management. So it's not necessarily that the ISTJs care about tradition. They care more about the efficiency of that tradition that aligns with their FI. So if they like Christmas, is it that they like Christmas or is it an opportunity for all their loved ones to gather and that's what they care about? We both have introverted feeling in our third slot. So we're not afraid of saying no to people if we don't feel like doing something or being somewhere. The primary difference is the location of NI and SI. We're both looking at information from the past to determine the future. The main difference is that the INTJ is more willing to try new things quicker than the ISTJ. But don't forget, ISTJs have NE in a fourth slot. That means they do enjoy trying new things. They're just not as quick to adopt new things in their life. Additionally, because SI is the first cognitive function stack for the ISTJ, they actually prioritize engaging with the world. Whereas 
for on INTJ, since extroverted sensing is in our last slot, we don't really prioritize the external world. We care more about living in our head. A simple example is eating dinner. How S-I-N-E manifests for an ISTJ during dinner is that they will most likely go to the same diner that has proven that their food is good. And if they fail adventurous enough, they'll probably just order something different from what they normally order, but it's still at the exact same diner. The ISTJ heard about Indian food and wanted to try it that night, but for some reason that night, they didn't feel adventurous enough to try out a brand new restaurant in addition to trying out a brand new cuisine. And once they become adventurous enough, they'll try out that Indian restaurant. Now looking at it from the INTJ perspective, there's a high probability that the INTJ won't even go out to eat, that we'll eat whatever that's around us because we don't care to engage with the world. We don't care to go out to eat. But if we do decide to eat, we heard about this new Indian restaurant that opened not too long ago, and we've never had Indian food before, but we can imagine that we will like the food. And as an INTJ, if we can imagine it, it's pretty much reality. So let's give it a try. The INTJ is also okay with going to a restaurant that has proven to have consistently good food. We're okay with eating the same food, if SE tells us, hey, you just need to eat. But if we engage with NI, then we're most likely going to eat at the Indian restaurant if we were to go out to eat. To conclude this portion, there's a huge difference in the way that INTJ and ISTJ operates if you remove deadline or projects that we're working on. ISTJs prioritizes engaging with the world and less likely to be an early adopter in new things. INTJs don't prioritize engaging with the world too much, but are more likely to try new things out quicker. And if you're still curious about the two, there's this INTJ YouTuber by the name of Ghost of Jung. I'll have his link below. He does this fantastic series with his wife. He's an ISTJ, she's an ISTJ, and they talk about just random topics. I love their videos because I have ISTJs in my life that I adore, and you don't get to see the side of an ISTJ unless they actually feel comfortable around you. So if you watch the video and if you've never met an ISTJ before, you're gonna see something completely different from the person that you're gonna see at work because Auntie F.I. felt comfortable and then she just talks like she is. And the husband and guy, yeah, he's an ISTJ. It's really funny because some of the smirks that he puts on whenever they have a discussion, I'm making the exact same face, but like I'm on the opposite side of the screen. It's funny, check them out. I'm an INTJ who procrastinates a lot. Still somehow I managed to get a decent rank in my studies, but I'm unable to use my full potential due to sheer laziness. Is that abnormal for an INTJ or I'm INTP? Also, you're making the video, which I requested before to talk about the core difference between INTP and INTJs. Am I making a video? Yes, but it's gonna take a while. I'm not gonna give you guys shit content. I don't like those videos that give high level explanation of the differences. I want to actually do an in-depth video. So it's coming, I just don't know when. I also released a video not to long ago to talk about that procrastination feeling that you feel. I'll link that video below. A TLDR of that video is that yes, INTJs do procrastinate, but we don't procrastinate in the sense of procrastination because we still get work done. We don't usually wait until the last minute. We're still working towards something. It's just we don't feel motivated. I'm not sure what the word is. I call it mama's out. The part of this question I do want to address is how to tell the difference between an INTJ and an INTP. Guys, I've had an INTP friend in my life since I was 14 years old. So I know INTPs really well. And I hope you INTP watchers of this channel don't take this personal because it's not supposed to be rude. That INTP friend is the only person I look at and think to myself, bro, you're a nerd. And I'm an INTJ, I'm a nerd too, but he out nerds me. The easiest way to tell the difference whether you're an INTP or an INTJ is by your primary cognitive function. The INTP has introverted thinking in the first slot and the INTJ have introverted intuition in the first slot. The key difference is that NI focuses way more on concepts, the big picture, whereas TI focuses more on details. To make it even more simple, NI focuses on why, TI focuses on what. That's why both TI users, the INTP and ISTPs are typically known as the scientists or the mechanics because they have to know the what details makes a certain something. What's the requirement to build this? What does this have to contain to be considered this? They understand the details really well. On the other side of the spectrum, the INTJs and INFJs, we lead with introverted intuition, which is typically why we're known as the analysts or the prophets, because we look at big concepts, but typically don't focus on the details. We look at why something is a requirement, and is that requirement the same if we change condition of it? Why is that the requirement? Why does condition matter? All the whys. For an NI user, there's rarely anything known as the truth because everything is situational. So I'm gonna provide an example of how both cognitive function operates and is very simplified, very, very simplified. So take it with a grain of salt, but this is exactly what it goes through. This is what TI thinks about, this is what NI thinks about. If a bear and a goat were to get in a fight, the TI user will say the bear will win because it has more mass than the goat, which is true if, and this is where NI comes in, the bear will beat the goat if they're on flat lands and there's nowhere for the goat to hide. But if they're fighting in a cliffy arena where there's high winds and agility actually matters, I'm gonna put my money on the goat. But keep in mind also not to make the mistake because both sides can still see the logical point of both arguments. It's just that 80% of the time, or at least the initial reaction we have to that question, 
Will a bear beat a goat in a fight? The TI user will use all the data and come to the conclusion, yes, because mass wins when it comes down to fights. The NI user will think of what is the situation, the arena that they're fighting in. INTP focuses on the details, the mass, INTJs focus on the concept, the arena. So how to tell them apart? TI users typically have this urge to correct people when they're wrong, especially when it comes down to just data or information. But a TI user, if we realize that you're not worth our time, we're just gonna walk away from the situation. Something I always ask other INTJs, have you heard of permaculture? It's a design science for landscaping, ecological maintenance that's sustainable and eco-friendly. I believe it's the best tool for combating climate change while also fighting against poverty, hunger, inequality, and ecological destruction. So I personally knew about the concept of permaculture, but I never actually knew the name for it. So thank you for educating me. To be completely honest, yes, I support permaculture. I think it's a fantastic idea, but I won't die on a hill for it. What I mean is that I appreciate the concept to combat global warming, poverty, closed loop system, waste management, I appreciate every single one of those things. I call myself a modern day hippie because I care about one love, one life, which take care of every single person in this world and the world itself. But I also understand that things aren't that simple. So I'm gonna put on my corporate hat for a second. I'm gonna talk as a marketer. One of the lessons that you learn very early on in a creative field is never fall in love with your first idea. Your original concept will change over time and what's delivered is most likely gonna be completely different from what you originally wanted. This not only ties to marketing or anything that's creative, there's also ties to laws and all that stuff that the government is trying to pass. It always starts off as one idea and it just changes over time. That's why it's so difficult when it comes down to working with different people. And the reason why it changes over time is because you're looking at it from one lens and one perspective, but then there's another person with a different lens, a different perspective that has to be taken into consideration. Is this the right message? Will it resonate with our customer? Is this the right people? Are we offending anyone? A lot of different things has to be taken into consideration. And the reason why we do that is very simple. Humans are just different. Every single person is different. Even though we're all INTJs or most of us are INTJs, we're still gonna look at the world from a different view. Tying this back to permaculture, I think it's a fantastic idea. I want world peace and I want the environment to be taken care of, but not everyone does and not everyone cares about it. I just don't see it being very popular in this capitalistic lifestyle that the world is leaning towards. And tying this back to our favorite INTJ, Elon Musk, the company Tesla is not the first company to make eco-friendly cars because hybrids and all that shit were out there before Tesla even came about. But what Tesla did for the world was to make eco-friendly cars that were sexy to have. And that's my closing thought for this topic. It's a nice niche lifestyle for certain people. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this video. I briefly went over these topics because I do plan on doing deep dives in most of those topics. Thanks again again for 1.5k subscribers. It's still wild to me that I'm getting subscribers in such a rapid rate and I really really do appreciate it. So just thank you again everyone. You are all far too kind. Thank you. Bye.